Let's compare the three ranged physical damage dealers of Final Fantasy XIV. If you already know you want to main a ranged physical damage dealer, or ranged physical DPS as it is more commonly called, we really need to work on that name. What a mouthful. Anyway, then this might serve to help you choose, or alternatively teach you what you don't want. Or, maybe you just want to hear about the pros and cons of each of these jobs, combined with a bit of comedy, in which case, you have also come to the right place. Please keep in mind that this video may be slightly opinionated, especially in the ratings shown for each job, so if you feel that I missed something or that you disagree, I would love to hear about it, or about your favorite ranged physical DPS in the comments. Now then. Let's start with the Bard, which combines archery with the musical prowess of a Bard, which does lead to some fantastical hard bows at times where you wonder how it would even be able to shoot in the first place. The Bard rotation revolves around circling through three different songs that sort of interact with the rest of your rotation as you go, due to each song having a cooldown of 2 minutes, but a duration of 45 seconds, this enables you to have a little bit of agency on which song you wish to spend the most time in. Due to the sheer amount of cooldowns the Bard has that has a 2 minute cooldown, a huge part of the job is about lining up all these things together with raid cooldowns. With that in mind, this means that the basics of the Bard rotation is keeping up two damage over time effects, or dots, spending bloodletter charges alongside using Imperial Arrow on cooldown, using Sidewinder every minute, and making use of your Refulgent Arrow procs. On top of this, each song has its own mechanic, with Mage's Ballad effectively making Bloodletter recharge much faster, Army's Payon making your GCD go much faster, and Wanderer's Minuet enabling the use of Pitch Perfect, which has a slightly more involved optimization. Use on 3 stacks, or 2 if Imperial Arrow is about to be ready, or even 1 if the song itself is about to end. In addition to all of that, Apex Arrow and Blast Arrow depend on your Soul Voice gauge, which, on average, through both the use of Imperial Arrow and your song's generating repertoire, generates 200 gauge over the course of 2 minutes. On average, of course, means that it can be less or more. However, the general game plan is to use it with all your big cooldowns, and then around 1 minute later, you should have enough gauge to use it again. Typically, it is better to use it early on 80 gauge here and just sit on 100 leading up to the raid cooldowns, compared to trying to use both casts on 100 and risking having less for the 2 minute cooldown window. And speaking of the raid cooldowns, this lines up with Wanderer's Minuet, as it is the strongest song for single target damage, and then you just have to use everything within your raid cooldowns. Namely Raging Strikes, Battle Voice and Radiant Finale. This means Apex Arrow, Blast Arrow, Reapplying Your Dots, Sidewinder, Barraging Refulgent Arrow, preferably fitting 3 Imperial Arrows in but this is optional, as many bloodletters as you can, not to mention Pitch Perfect as you are able. On top of all that, you have to use Burst Shots, and time it so the Barrage cast happens at a time where you aren't already able to use Refulgent Arrow. For Area of Effect, the Bard forgoes the dots and just replaces their general attack strategy with AOE alternatives like Ladon's Bite, Shadow Bite and Reign of Death. While Mage's Ballad is the strongest song for AOE, the fact that your songs sort of circulate mean that it is better to make sure you can line up Wanderer's Minuet with raid cooldowns than lining up Mage's Ballad with an AOE situation. For new players, rest assured that most of these complexities of the Bard are introduced slowly, so don't feel too intimidated. In terms of defense, Bard has access to Nature's Min, which can assist your healers in keeping someone, probably your tank, alive. In addition to that, Bard also has Warden's Payon, which is the only ability in the game that can remove a debuff, meaning that Bards are capable of removing a threatening debuff faster than a healer. You can even use it preemptively to apply a buff to someone that removes the debuff when it comes up. This can be uniquely helpful in fights where a removable stun is present, like for instance the Golem in Sunken Temple of Khan. You can identify a removable debuff by the white line over the debuff icon. The ranged physical DPS role itself has a handful of utility and defensives they all share, so let's just go over them together now. They all have access to a slow, often only useful in unusual content like Palace of the Dead, a snare, same as the slow, 
They also have access to an interrupt, which can be invaluable at times. You can identify attacks that can be interrupted by the cast bar pulsing and blinking at you. These jobs also get a heal in second wind and arms length for knockbacks of course. And finally, they also get peloton, which you should try to apply to your party whenever you are not in combat. It costs you nothing and gives everyone near you a speed boost. You can even run back to people falling behind to make sure they get the buff too, so they catch up faster. Take note that peloton does not stack with sprint, so the stronger of the two, sprint will just take precedence. At higher levels, these jobs also each get their own aesthetically unique raid-wide defensive cooldown, but they are effectively identical in that they don't stack. However, if all of this seems very scary, remember that you just need to unlock Barb to be allowed access to the performance menu, allowing you to play music wherever you like. I sure wonder how big a percentage of the players that leveled up Bard did it just for that. Next up, Machinist, combining the style of a Final Fantasy Gunner and Gadgeteer and other similar mechanical tinkerer jobs of the franchise. This leads to many of the Machinist's attacks involving pulling out random tools from nowhere in particular, although many of them use just the one big mega tool. The Machinist also has the ability to temporarily summon a mechanical companion, although this is mostly just a glorified dot than a real entity. The rotation of the Machinist revolves around making sure your 20 second, 40 second and 60 second cooldown attacks go out on time. Everything else sort of takes a backseat to this and you build your rotation around it. Gorse Round and Ricochet can be stockpiled for a burst, but given that the burst itself every two minutes often involves hypercharge, which generates a few charges of these, this may be unnecessary, meaning Gorse Round and Ricochet can be weaved whenever you can. Reassemble is then timed to use on any of the big cooldown attacks previously mentioned, and that leaves Barrel Stabilizer, Wildfire, Automaton Queen and your incidental hypercharge windows to pick up the remaining pieces. While the Bard has a single attack as a filler in Burst Shot, the Machinist has a 1-2-3 combo for the same purpose. Because Machinist does not actually have any damage buffs of its own, your interest in stacking together a lot of cooldowns in a short time frame is entirely supported by the fact that other jobs have raid cooldowns coming out every 2 minutes. This typically means each of the 3 timed cooldown attacks, Automaton Queen, Wildfire and at least one hypercharge should be fit in this window when you want to optimize. Now, regarding that Automaton Queen, over 2 minutes it is expected you will typically generate around 190 battery gauge, which does mean that you would want to use 100 when the raid cooldowns come up and 90 a minute between, very similar to Bard's Soul Voice gauge. The way Hypercharge interacts with the rotation is primarily that it is used to make the most of the wildfire cooldown, but beyond that, Hypercharge presents a 7.5 second burst window with some wiggle room. The wiggle room is used to make sure these 7.5 seconds do not delay any of the big 3 attacks, and that is pretty much it. For AoE, the Machinist flips the 20 second cooldown drill to a dot in Bioblaster and then replaces the 1 2 3 combo with, um, Shotgun. Machinist adds some extra difficulty through Flamethrower being deceptively bad. While Scattergun and Outer Crossbow average to around 72.5 potency per second and Flamethrower does 80 potency per second, the fact that you cannot move at all while using it and it has only two thirds of the range of the two other options often means you miss some of the targets when using it, completely nullifying the value of using it in the first place. This relegates Flamethrower to be a tool you use to sometimes sneak in a free hit when the boss returns from being untargetable. In terms of utility and defense, the Machinist only has the shared tools between the ranged physical DPS jobs, nothing unique to it. This, combined with the lack of a raid damage boosting cooldown, makes Machinist what can be considered the ranged physical DPS variant of the so-called selfish DPS. The good, the bad and the dirty of this particular aspect is something I have discussed at length in other videos, so let's not get too deep into this. The great news are that all these tools available to the Machinist makes it incredibly good at solo content or soloable content like Palace of the Dead, Heaven on High and such. Due to its range allowing it to kite and deal with mechanics with ease and its high upfront damage dealing with enemies before they get to retaliate. And if you're looking for the randomness inherent in like a gadgeteer, look no further than PvP, where Chainsaw isn't just a chance to be good but a 
tiny chance to be the biggest game swing possible in a PvP match. This leads us to the final job, Dancer. With a filler rotation and burst cooldowns that both invoke the inspiration of an improvising dancer going with the flow, the dancer chooses one among their party as their dance partner and focuses their attention on them especially in terms of rage utility. Somewhat similar to the Bard, the dancer's rotation revolves heavily around making the most of their tools every two minutes, due to the sheer amount of damage buffs available to themselves. However, before we get to that, let's talk about the dancer's standard rotation. The basic rotation of the dancer starts with a 1-2 combo that each can enable a stronger version of themselves half the time. These attacks then half the time can grant a resource to use an OGCD attack, and they then half the time enable an extra, extra OGCD attack. You heard me right, when you press Cascade, there is right there a 50% chance that you can use Reverse Cascade, and by extension a 25% chance you get a Feather, and when spending that there is by extension a 12.5% chance that you can also use Fan Dance 3, every time you use a basic attack. On top of this, we add Standard Step, a small Simon Says-like attack that hits like a truck that you want to use every 30 seconds as fast as possible. Every minute, Flourish then also enables you to basically go Yahtzee and get all the random effects all at once instantly. Since you have plenty of time to make use of them, there is no reason to wait with using it, especially since the buff from Flourish regarding the GST based attacks have different names, allowing you to have both at once. While all this is happening, it is common that you stockpile both up to 3 feathers and as much Esprit gauge as you can without overcapping, allowing you to keep as much damage for the big burst as you can. While this still means you will use Saber Dance outside of cooldowns, it means it is not often, and the same applies for your fan dances. Every 2 minutes however, like with Bard, you want to use everything all at once. Standard Step, Technical Step, Devilment, Starfall, Fan Dance 4, Telana, one or more Saber Dances, all of your feathers and of course an extra flourish to spend everything. It gets a bit hectic, but in my opinion, not as much as Bard. Oh, and regarding area of effect, all of the dancers' attacks either have an inherent area of effect component, or they have an AoE alternative to the exact same attack, very much simplifying how you deal with this. In terms of utility and defense, dancers' close position means that standard step and devilment just get shared wholesale with whoever you choose in your raid. Make sure to pick a big strong DPS, but if there are multiple dancers, pick different partners. Curing Waltz is another ability that is shared with your partner and heals around both of you, becoming a very potent heal if you stand together. Improvisation doubles as a heal over time OGCD with a tiny shield to weave between attacks, and a channeled heal over time with a bigger shield for when the boss leaves the area. Make sure to not forget this ability. Naturally, the dancer also has all the general role utility. Due to how you can prepare a dance up to 15 seconds before you want to unleash it, the dancer is notorious for, when optimizing, wanting if not outright demanding more than 15 seconds on the pull timer at least. But because standard step can be used outside of combat, it is possible to buff yourself and your partner and then prepare to pull, leading to the obnoxiously long 45 second pulls to really super maximize the dancer's damage. Don't be that guy. Now, to round up this comparison, each of the ranged physical DPS jobs, such a long name, of course brings something unique to the table. In terms of literal performance, the Dancer is the strongest at empowering one individual in your raid, while Bard is a bit stronger at empowering everyone. The Machinist wins out if you want to perform, personally. Obviously, as a new player, your only option to start is Bard. However, if you want the easiest experience, with the least amount of things needed to be tracked, I would recommend moving over to Dancer once you're high enough level to switch. Given that both Bard and Dancer revolve very heavily around using everything every two minutes, starting with Bard will probably prepare you decently well to work with Dancer. And that leads us to the ending of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this comparison or even found it funny or interesting, please consider leaving a like. You can also subscribe or buff the bell to get notified when next I post a video. And if you want to support me and the channel even more, you can also become a member. And finally, make sure to let me know in the comments which ranged physical DPS is your favorite. Fun fact, back in A Realm Reborn, Warriors Berserk actually completely pacified them for a few seconds at the end of the buff. 
The common way to deal with this was to have a bard use Warden's Paeon to fix it, because shockingly, this action worked mostly like it does today, even back then. 